Hi, Gary. It's so nice to meet you. Thank you for it's being here. Yeah. So we'll dive right in with less than 2% of funding going to women. I am yes. a startup founder. Uh, what would you do if the odds were stacked against you? Would you push through, do VC, or would you just say, fuck it and go a totally different route to look for fundraising? Well, look, I mean, I think if you're able to make money versus raise money, you always want to do that. Um, fundraising became so popular the last 15 years with venture capital. You know, you, know, you, you might find this interesting. My journey, I was a poor student, and like people didn't want to fund bad students. Yeah. You know, now it's different. We don't think about that. But when I was coming up the game, there was nobody who would ever fund anything I would do because yeah. I was so bad at school. So what I did and what I think people should do is they should make content. If you make unlimited content and post it at scale on LinkedIn for the next four years about everything you're doing here, yeah. the money's going to come to you. Okay. So I think that's systematic issues, but I think merit always kills bad systems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I believe content and the free distribution that social networks provide has changed the world. I know that we like to shit on these platforms now and like, they're bad. Yeah. They're free. Yeah. So I think content is the unlock. I thought you said it was refreshing too because I feel like there's a lot of pressure and especially as women like, oh, NFTs, Web3, now I gotta learn something else. Like, and to, for you to just say, no, just focus on content, on social. Like, it's huge relief. It feels like we're already doing so much. Especially for what you're doing here. Like, you have real stories here. This is a real thing. This is tangible. Yeah. You need to tell as many stories. I mean, this, needs, this camera needs to be going on at all times. Okay. You need to interview everyone. You need to... Literally, this town is, you need to interview every fucking female in the yeah. indie, period. Content, 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 content. It will lead to things. You're one video away. That just is the right, I mean, when I think about my most viral TikTok where I told the woman about self-esteem, like, I didn't think that there was anything so profoundly different right. in that moment. It was just the right piece of content at the right time. Same for you. Okay. So you acquired Pure Row in yes. 2017. I so did. I actually started as a journalist, so that's why I'm back here full circle. It's really surreal. It's cool. Um, I own a women's lifestyle media platform called Indie Maven. Um, and so I'm curious why, and then also how you see that business evolving in the next couple of years. Um, I mean, I don't know if you know, but 50% of people on earth are women. Yeah, <laughs> I do. But I also had a lot of men tell me that that was not worth investing in. Yes. So I'm super curious. That's just, I mean, that's just, I, I don't like the word stupid. It's really rarely comes out of my mouth, as my team knows. Any man that told you that that's just, that's silly. I don't even want to like use that word. I had a couple emails to write. Look, people, here's here's one thing I tell a lot of my minority and women friends. They are they are completely misunderstanding how many white men get shit on to. Yeah. Like, you get so caught up into the, your life's journey mm -hmm. and how it looks. Mm -hmm. The reality is, is like, investors shit on everyone. <laughs> You're not special. Cool. Great. You know what I mean? Like, they're not, they're not overly, as a matter of fact, when I was coming up the game, I was getting shit on back, like I said, to bad grades. That's kind of gone away. I mean, any modern 2023 20, investor who doesn't realize that you should just be looking for great talent, whether they're boy, girl, black, green, orange, alien, like, you know, you've got to invest in talent. Yeah. Talent comes in all shapes and sizes. This is why I like circumventing them. Okay. Like circumventing them and creating demand. You know, it's a lot more fun to be asked than be asking. Mm -hmm. And so the way you can do that is through content. And so why did I buy it? Because I wanted to own a female publishing company because I think it's a good business. And I think that it's important to have your hands in as many things as possible. As far as the future of the business, I want to be a multimedia organization. So podcasts, TV shows. Uh, one thing right now I'm very passionate about is micro shows on social. Mm -hmm. So I'm very much focused on that for that business. How do we create franchises that work as seven, 10 minute shows on social? That's what I'm thinking about. Okay, I've got three kids, two under five and a 13 year old stepson. How do you hope characters like Resilient Red Devil and your other friends will change their lives? Like how do you hope they reflect on this when they're in their 20s? I love it. The way you do the 80s. I think the world has gotten too red and blue using politics. Yeah. And I think what my mission is, is to make the world purple. So to answer your question, on, the, on all three of them, whatever all of us have, it's kind of like vitamins. We all have deficiencies, mm -hmm. right? We all have strengths and we all have weaknesses. Whatever their individual weaknesses are, I, my great dream is that they fall in love with a character that fills that gap. 
right? So I'll give you an example. I think that competitiveness is actually really good. Yeah. Like really good. Yeah. Like, like actually phenomenal. Yeah. Yet I'm very aware by like current standards, we have like a weird relationship with it. Like, hey, it's toxic and you know. Right, yeah, yeah, no. Which is insane. Right. So what my hope is, is that competitive clown captures one of those three attention. Maybe they themselves are not as competitive mm -hmm. or have bought into it being bad. Mm -hmm. They fall in love with the character and they realize the virtues and the good about competition. Mm -hmm. And maybe start developing a little more competitive DNA. Awesome, I think last question. So I get asked a lot because I consult a lot of entrepreneurs and women. And I think the thing that there are people are always trying to get out of me is like, what's the magic sauce? And there isn't. Correct. Like, to not do the same thing to you, but can, if you can point to a couple things that have brought you to here today, to this level of success, to doing Vcom, can you name a couple things? Yes, but I'm gonna actually take a stab at the impossible question. Let's do it. My current belief of the magic formula, which yeah. there is none, right. but my current belief is the magic formula for most currently today is a massive one. And I absolutely believe that the women that listen to this are gonna really resonate with what I'm about to say. The answer to your question is to stop judging themselves so much. Really? Really. I would tell you that one of the singular reasons I'm here is my inability to judge myself for my shortcomings. Okay. I'm, I would like to hold myself to a standard. Yeah. When people hear what I say, they're like, what, I have to hold my, no, no, I hold myself to a great, I wanna be the greatest entrepreneur of all time. I would argue that's a very high standard. That is different than when I make inevitable missteps day in sure. and week and month and year out that I don't cripple myself and say, I suck. Women have an incredible DNA structure when they have children to having to balance the two most important things in the world, themselves and their ambitions, and this subconscious conscious responsibility to be a mother, and they're beating themselves up 24 seven. You can't do two things at once. Give yourself a break. Maybe you're gonna have a bad month because your business is exploding and you have to work 13 hours a day and little Ricky got an F on the test because he couldn't review it. It's gonna be fine. As a matter of fact, you're being about to make me cry. <laughs> Start with tearing right off. Thank you. As a matter of fact, it's actually good for little Ricky to get a fucking F. Yeah. yeah. Moms doing their homework for their kids is actually a disease. Good. Just don't I'm judge. terrible at math. Yeah. Fuck that shit. Stop beating yourself up. All right. We're here first.